I want to start out by saying if you are a Christian and a vegan, I appreciate you so much. I feel like we need more Christian vegans to speak up in their Christian circles because the vast majority of vegans are not religious, so a lot of Christians tend to block out what we have to say. It is very strange that Christianity is so associated with right-wing politics in this country because Jesus was clearly more of a socialist than a Republican, but that's a side tangent. If you're a Christian and you're also vegan, I think that shows that you have more of an open mind than most people, so I hope you can watch this video with an open mind. The vegan in me is like, stay Christian and spread that vegan message to all your Christian friends, but the atheist in me is like, drop that shit because it doesn't make sense. A bit of backstory, I was raised in the South and my parents were both religious, but they were not evangelical. I wouldn't say they really pushed it on us. They weren't anti-gay, we didn't pray at every meal or read the Bible every night. And I remember my mom telling me that these stories in the Bible, like particularly the Old Testament, were just stories with a moral teaching. They weren't literally true. I honestly didn't realize that a lot of Christians believed the story of Noah's Ark to be factually, literally true until much later, and that was shocking to me. With all that said, we did go to church pretty regularly. I was in the church choir, I was an acolyte, I went to many church functions, vacation Bible school, and I even took a sex ed class called Created by God, which of course taught that abstinence is the only way to prevent pregnancy. In middle school, I went through confirmation because at the time I thought that to be a good person was to be a good Christian. And I wanted to be a good person, so I attempted to read the Bible like every good Christian, and I think I got like halfway through Genesis because it was boring as hell. I would say that I believed in God, but only because it was the default, not because I had come to this conclusion through critical thought and assessment of other religions and philosophical ideas. The turning point for me was when my older sister started questioning things. I remember her saying that it didn't make sense that good people who happened to be raised Buddhist or Hindu would go to hell, but then a murderer or rapist who repents on his deathbed gets to go to heaven. Shortly after this conversation, my sister and I watched the movie Religious, and I remember asking my youth leader about dinosaurs, and he told me that dinosaurs were irrelevant to the timeline. This answer really solidified my doubts. This was when I was about 14, so 8th grade, and for a long time, pretty much my entire high school experience, I identified as an agnostic deist. Christianity made no sense to me, but atheism seemed just as silly, like how could we all come from nothing? It wasn't until college that I had my second revelation, or whatever you want to call it. My best friends in high school, who had been agnostic like me, found God senior year of high school and really got sucked into the church. So when I started college, I felt kind of lonely and I didn't have very many friends. So I would hang out with my one friend from high school and go to the dining hall with her friends from church. There was this one instance where this guy got really deep one night and started sharing his testimony and asking me about my story. I remember being really uncomfortable as the only agnostic at a table full of Christians and wishing that I could better articulate my point of view. That experience led me down a rabbit hole. I ended up reading The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins and got sucked into a YouTube vortex binge watching Jacqueline Glenn and old George Carlin clips. One day I was at Barnes and Noble and stumbled across Letter to a Christian Nation by Sam Harris and started reading it in the store and got instantly hooked and went home, literally finished the entire book in one sitting. Um, it was pretty short, but I was just blown away by how concise and well written it was. Literally every sentence I read just resonated so strongly and I'd never had the experience of someone articulating my feelings so perfectly. He also raised points that I'd never considered but made so much sense. If you're a Christian and consider yourself to be an open-minded person, please read this book. It's so, so good. 
So now let's get into how this relates to veganism. Both Christianity and carnism are cultural norms. Carnism, for those who are scratching their heads, is the antithesis of veganism. It's the ideology that animals are here on this earth to serve our interests. There are exceptions, of course, but most people are religious by default. It is the dominant belief system in the culture they grew up in. The same is true with carnism. We are taught from a young age that certain animals are pets and others are food. Eating meat, dairy, and eggs is normal, natural, and necessary. It is so ingrained that most people don't even question it. I didn't until I was 18 years old. The biggest issue I have with religion is that it suppresses critical thinking. Dogma is the underlying problem, and religion and carnism are both forms of dogma. This is an explanation for why the vast majority of vegans are left-leaning and non-religious. These are both conclusions that are reached by questioning the status quo. If you're an atheist, you understand that there's no evidence that the Bible is true, and why believe something without evidence? Faith is a terrible epistemology because we reject it in all other areas. We reject faith in Allah, Zeus, and Krishna. If you're a Christian, you are an atheist with respect to all of these other gods. So what makes atheism so outlandish? I forgot to mention this earlier, but it was The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins that made me drop the agnostic label and embrace atheism. I wasn't agnostic about fairies or leprechauns or Santa Claus, and I realized that this idea of a god that I had been holding onto was no different. The claims of Christianity don't survive scrutiny, and the claims of carnism, like we need animal products for protein and iron and calcium, or at least some people do, and other animals in the wild kill and eat other animals, so it's perfectly fine that we do. Insert generic standard excuse here. These do not hold up under scrutiny either. The science is on our side. It is the official position of the American Dietetic Association, the largest body of nutrition professionals in the world, that a vegan diet is suitable for all people at all stages of life. There is no essential nutrient found in animal products that you cannot get from non-animal sources. It is the official position of the United Nations that a vegan diet is the most environmentally sustainable. And lastly, it is the scientific consensus that animals, including fish, are sentient beings that feel pain and suffering. If you want further proof that arguments against veganism do not survive scrutiny, I recommend checking out carnismdebunked.com and watching the Cosmic Skeptics podcast episode with Matt Dillahunty, where he completely backs him into a corner. What is most ironic is that people think that veganism is a religion, when the opposite is true. This perception comes from the fact that vegans are very vocal and want others to adopt the vegan lifestyle. We come across as very preachy and evangelical. But the problem with preachy Christians isn't that they're outspoken, it's that they're factually wrong and the message that they're sharing and the ideals that they want others to adopt are often harmful. 56 billion land animals and trillions if you count fish are slaughtered every single year for frivolous reasons. This is a holocaust and it is a moral imperative that we put an end to it. Vegans will not stop speaking up for these voiceless victims until we achieve total liberation. I'll end with a quote from Isaac Bashevis Singer, a Nobel laureate and Holocaust survivor. What do they know, all these scholars, all these philosophers, all the leaders of the world? They have convinced themselves that man, the worst transgressor of all the species, is the crown of creation. All other creatures were created merely to provide him with food, pelts, to be tormented, exterminated. In relation to them, all people are Nazis. For the animals, it is an eternal Treblinka. It is my hope that popular atheist influencers follow in the footsteps of Cosmic Skeptic and begin questioning the cultural norm of animal exploitation and embrace the vegan label as they embrace the atheist label. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Are you a Christian? Are you an atheist? 
what do you think of my analysis? And don't forget to share this video so more people can see it. And see you next week. Yo, how when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them. When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, no, no meat now. How when me eat them, I wonder when me yum. When me tell them, say that I'm a vegan, man. How when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them. When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, no, no meat now.